This was exactly what I expected it would be. I knew I would hate it. I knew it. <laughs> So, 007, Road to a Million is out on Amazon. You can watch it now. It's eight episodes in total, and I've seen it. And now you are probably looking forward to what I think of it. We come to that in a moment. First of all, a quick summary of what the show is about. So it is a game show concept that takes participants around the globe where they have to do challenges in certain level stages where they can win up to one million pounds. So the first level, they do a 5,000 pound question going on to a 10,000, 25,000, 100,000 and so on until they eventually reach one million if they're good enough. Uh, if they answer a question incorrectly, they are out of the game and yeah, they lost. Do I like the concept? Well, I'm not particularly a fan of game shows. Um, I've watched many on, on German television, on British television. Uh, so I've, I've seen a lot. And I really wanted to give uh, Road to a Million a chance because I thought, OK, uh, brave new world, as Bond would say, um, new territory for Eon Productions. Um, doing a game show together with Amazon Studios. Um, and I must say the production quality of the show is really high. So what you get is you get nice location shots, for example, Gravina in, in Italy where uh, No Time to Die was filmed, or uh, Rio de Janeiro where Sugarloaf Mountain where Moonraker was filmed. Um, a lot of it is from the Daniel Craig era in, in the first three episodes. Also, uh, the music, there is, of course, a lot of Bond music in it that accompanies the challenges uh, as the, the teams progress through the show. Um, and uh, if I count it correctly, there are nine individual teams of two. Uh, they don't play against each other. They play together with each other as a team. And each of them participate to win the million pounds. So it's not all participants of the show sharing uh, the winnings of one million pounds. So it's just every team has the chance to win the million pounds. Um, as I said, I really wanted to give it a chance. Uh, I watched the first episode. I found it okay. Uh, what I really liked was uh, the, the cinematic imagery. The, the show is presented in 16 by 9. It's not a traditional TV format where you would present a game show in. But uh, given that it stems from a film franchise and has this background and wants to utilize it, it makes sense to film it in a certain way that it feels like a film. Um, very nice camera images of the locations, especially in Italy when you have Gravina or you have the city of Matera where the people have to do challenges in. Um, but... I'm afraid that's it, basically. Uh, episode two and three, I started hating it and I, I knew I would hate it. I knew it. Really, I wanted to give it a chance, but the first time I heard that Ian Productions is doing a game show together with Amazon Studios to put it on Amazon, um, I thought, okay, why? That is my first question, why? And the next question is what? What are they going to do? Is it something exciting? Like the participants really assuming the role of an agent, meaning they have to do stuff that spies do. And sadly, that is not the case with Road to a Million. What they have to do is simply go somewhere, pick up a silver suitcase where there is a question in it presented on a little video screen with um, three smoke grenades. Uh, two will have uh, a red smoke grenade and one will have a green one. The green one is obviously the correct answer. And um, then answer the question. The questions in the boxes are not at all bond related. They are, I would say, advanced common knowledge. So you have to have a bit of knowledge of literature, for example. The very first question was um, 
a question that had to do with Shakespeare, for example. Um, I won't give many details away so in case you want to watch it and, and give it a go. Uh, I will not spoil anything for you. Um, but what I found really weird is the whole show is like a snow globe of Bond stuff. Uh, you just shake it and then you have this. 007 Road to a Million. Uh, I give you an example. There are certain elements from the Bond world, uh, props, mainly big props, so I'm speaking of cars, um, that are placed randomly in the show and have absolutely no significance to the show whatsoever. Um, example, first episode, uh, the contestants have to find... Uh, what was it, a farm. They have to find a farmhouse in Scotland with a big garage and in that garage is, for example, the Rolls-Royce from Goldfinger. But it's just a background prop. Uh, the question has absolutely nothing to do with it. They open the silver suitcase and Brian Cox, as the controller, says behind you is a Rolls-Royce. He doesn't even say it was in the film Goldfinger. And maybe that wasn't the concept, but you, as a Bond fan, clearly know this is the Rolls Royce from Goldfinger that Goldfinger drove through the Swiss Alps with. It's all just standing around. It happens for a second time in, I think, the third episode where you have the Jaguar from Spectre, the burnt Jaguar that Hinks drives. Um, and it also, it's in a garage in Scotland Behind it are two other cars, and the question has to do with the third car, which has absolutely nothing to do with Bond, because it's a Daimler car of a prime minister. So Daimler is a German brand and not, nothing that Bond ever drove. Bond only drove BMW when it comes to German cars. Huh? Uh, so I found it odd that these cars are just randomly placed for us to see and you say, oh, oh yeah, that's the car from Spectre, but that's it. The moment dies down immediately. And I find it even worse that it has absolutely no connection to the game show whatsoever. Nothing. It's just there. And then I got the feeling this feels rather forced. Huh? Oh, we have to put this here, we have to put this there, and uh, th this will remind people of Bond, and then uh, all the music that's playing is, of course, uh, Bond music, mainly from the Daniel Craig era. <sighs> there was one, uh, the, the Moonraker theme song was playing, and uh, there was one piece of uh, The World Is Not Enough when they show scenes in Istanbul. Um, yeah, so I found that really forced. Like I said, it's just a snow globe, and yeah. Of Bond stuff and you sprinkle the show with it and hope people buy it yeah. um, and that is just not enough for me um, no and the challenges that people had to do the contestants the, the challenges they had to do for example climbing a very high crane hanging over the bridge uh, of no time to die in Gravina Italy this felt more like I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Uh, especially in, in the second episode where uh, they end up in Matera, a married couple, as contestants, they end up in Matera, have to find a restaurant. They are told to find a restaurant that is called Taranto, and they find it, and it's not even a restaurant, it's just some room with a kitchen and a box with a tarantula spider in there. So it reminds you of Dr. No and uh, the tarantula chamber in Dr. No's Island, yeah. But the, the question or the quest that they have to solve is how much does a tarantula weigh? Uh, and they solve this riddle, this quest, by finding a scale and trying to weigh it. Um, that was, I have to admit, that was exciting because if you have arachnophobia, uh, which is the fear of spiders, it's not easy to let a spider out of the box and weigh it on a scale without it running through the room. So this, this can instantly kill you when you uh, have a fear of spiders. Like I do, by the way. Uh, I would have had difficulty doing that. But again, also that. 
this doesn't feel like spy stuff to me. This doesn't feel like something Bond would have to do going out and putting a, a tarantula on a scale to see how much it weighs or measuring a snake, how long a snake is. That was also one of the challenges. Uh, they, they put one of the, these silver suitcases with the question um, into a bigger box with a boa constrictor and then some smaller snakes that are not even dangerous um, just to make it more exciting but as I said it feels forced it feels totally forced and uh, third episode I started hating it yeah and I thought okay this was exactly what I expected it would be and would this be a normal television show I wouldn't watch it I would maybe watch 10 minutes of it and would decide it's absolutely boring not my type of show that I want to watch so switch it off uh, no since it's Bond, you're at least willing to give it uh, a go and see what they did with it. And um, but really, the only the only positive thing I can say is that they really made an effort to make this whole show look cinematic. Really nice images they captured um, that give the feeling of of uh, the, this Bond world because Bond films are usually shot in a particular style and manner and the locations where James Bond has been have always been photographed by the individual uh, camera people, uh, cinematographers and so on in a particular style and highlighting the beauty of each place and this has worked very well in pretty much all the Bond films. Um, this is something the show does really well um, you have nice helicopter shots, you have nice drone shots uh, and all of that. A bit much color grading, I would say, in some scenes, uh, extreme colors where, where you see that color grading has been done, so it loses a bit of its naturality. Uh, am I a fan of that? Mm, uh, color grading is okay in some cases if you just correct minor color differences to make it a bit more exciting but in some scenes this has been overdone and uh, yeah, it's just too much it's too glossy um, so whatever you make of it you have to watch it yourself the show is not for me unfortunately but uh, as I said I knew it I knew it before um, I gave it the be my best shot I really uh, watched all the episodes but I was bored to death uh, for me it was a bore fest um, intercut with uh, meaningless shots of actor Brian Cox, who is a really great actor. I love Brian Cox. I really, I love all his films, and uh, I admire him a lot as an actor. But absolutely wasted on this show, because the only thing he mainly does when you when you calculate his screen time and what he actually does is look into the camera or look on his screens where he follows what the contestants do looking at a countdown occasionally giving out a smirk or um, a wink or um, some line you know? like you don't know what to expect or something like that but no I just thought it was it was totally wasted and also that it looks forced <laughs> absolutely forced Um I don't have a master plan on how to how to make it better the show um, not off the top of my head but definitely uh, the show as it is is not for me as a fan it's uh, it's just yeah as I said it's boring and it repeats itself everything repeats itself and you just see a couple of new things but as I said it's just props placed in in an artificial uh, world and you know all of this there have been hundreds of camera people around them and they make it look like um, there are only the contestants and but yeah you know how a game show is made obviously yeah. so as glossy as it is um, don't don't waste your time life is too short for uh, for that or give it a go first three episodes like I did and then decide if you want to go on just for the sake of it being Bond-related. Um, I watched the whole thing to judge the whole thing. 
because it would be useless or it would make no sense to just watch one episode or two episodes and say it's shite. Um, no, I watched it all and this is my conclusion. It's shite, as I said before. I'm sorry for the strong language. I should have a disclaimer or a warning. Strong language, profanity, whatever. But no. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm glad I can do this on my channel because, uh, well, I'm not getting paid to write good stuff about Road to a Million. I'm not invited to launch events and in order to write good things about it. <laughs> uh, I can say what I think and what I feel is right. So always love that and always will. <laughs> Great. Uh, okay, let me know in the comments if you watched uh, Road to a Million and if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, absolutely no problem. I love uh, when you have a different opinion and we can... Uh, talk about it and share opinions. Uh, this was mine. I'm sorry it is the way it is. I really wished it would have been better, but uh, that's it. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, keep following the Bond Bulletin and uh, have a great day. Bye bye.